Hello everyone, it's me, Clayton. I just finished watching Wonder Woman 1984, directed once again by Patty Jenkins, and starring Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Pedro Pascal, and Kristen Wiig. Now, this long-awaited sequel to the 2017 Wonder Woman film was supposed to be released earlier this year, but due to the pandemic and due to various delays surrounding it, the film was ultimately pushed back to, to, Christmas, Day, to Christmas Day, where it's not only available in theaters, but it's available on HBO Max for, for an entire month. So, after all the waiting and after all the anticipation, is this film definitely another star-making role for Gal Gadot and a proof that the DCU can still stick around? Well, it's not as good as the first Wonder Woman, but I definitely think it's a solid sequel in its own right. But let's get to the story, shall we? As the title suggests, the movie takes place in 1984, where, where Diana happens to continue going through her life while immortal, but still missing her long-lost love, St Steve Trevor, once again played by Chris Pine. But when an aspiring businessman named Maxwell Lord, played by Pedro Pascal, and a bit of a nobody who works with Diana, named Bar named Barbara Minerva, played by played by Kristen Wiig, happen to have dreams of of becoming more than they truly are and becoming getting higher up in the world. They end up getting essentially a monkey's paw kind of deal with a ma magical artifact known as the Dreamstone. This allows Barbara Minerva to be respected more by her colleagues and to gain more power and for Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lord to get the business that he always wanted and to get really big in the oil in, in, in the oil business. But this also causes various issues throughout the world and it's up to Diana as well as an unexpectedly returning ally to to basically set things right. So that's all I'll say about the story. Now, when it comes to the overall story, it definitely is rather well told, and it definitely builds up more and more throughout throughout the story. It feels like all the fights actually have stakes, considering that Wonder Woman gets weaker as the film goes on through something related to the plot that I won't spoil. Basically, it actually makes all these fights have actual stakes, because you feel like Diana can be in actual danger. She's Wonder Woman, but even she isn't invisible isn't invincible, especially against an artifact and two villains who happen to be, have quite, who happen to have quite a bit uh, more than just enough power to take her on. They also happen to have the motivations that do make them somewhat interesting. I do think they are better overall villains than in the first Wonder Woman film. Not to say that the villains in the first Wonder Woman were bad, but they were just sort of generic, kind of there to either be generically evil, or there with with some sympathetic qualities, but ones that weren't explored very well. Here, both Barbara Minerva and Maxwell Lord are fleshed out pretty well throughout the film, which is probably why the film ends up being two and a half hours, but they're used well to develop not only the heroes, but the villains as well, as you actually sympathize with Barbara at, at the beginning, considering that she just isn't seen by the world. And that she and you can understand her wish to want more power and to be more like Diana. You can also understand Maxwell Lord's deal, as he's definitely a quite a bit different than he was in the comics, but it's actually a, a decent portrayal that I don't mind, considering that Maxwell Lord can be kinda hit or miss when it comes to his comic book storylines, at least from my experience. On top of that, the special effects are great, as expected. With Wonder Woman, with Wonder Woman lassoing her way through lightning, with her blocking bullets, with the, her speed and flight powers being fully utilized, along with a new wingsuit, and that, the one the scene in the trailers definitely makes an impression. And I wouldn't be surprised if they pull that off, pull that thing out for another film in the future, because I just think it's really cool. Even the even the cheetah visual effects that seen in one of the trailers, definitely those actually aren't that bad. It's definitely not on the levels of cats, which is only one year old and it and it looks like something that would have been made in the eighties, which is kind of ironic since this is nineteen eighty four. But yeah, speaking of the eighties setting, the, everything from the costume design to the to the musical choices to the fashion. 
to even cameos from like Jerry the King Lawler, at least on a magazine cover, all of those really fit the setting and they really pull you into this universe. Not to mention, there is a special end credit scene that, again, I won't spoil, but let's just say it features someone who has been deserving of this kind of tribute to her, to, to her impact on superhero films in general and superhero culture in general, and I'm just glad that she ended up getting the tribute she deserved. So, so yeah, I do think that the pace is a bit s slower than expected at the beginning. The two and a half hours can feel a little bloated, and there are certain aspects about the about the magic here that don't always work out. But when the film works, it works very well. That's why I'm going to give Wonder Woman 1984 an 8 out of 10. See you next time.